My name's Bob Greenia. I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So on the weekend, on March the 13th, I gave a presentation that was talking about our replication. David Boutlier did a reactor design that I worked with him on based off understanding of Omaza gas and research surrounding that. And Alan Goldwater at his Magic Sound lab did some analysis and it would appear that with the tungsten and with the titanium we replicated the types of transmutations and physical effects that were observed with those two elements with this system and it had ultrasonics in there to introduce sound and the concept behind having the sound was to produce more dissolved oxygens to try and promote the production of the good gas. Anyway, we also came stuck with the proposal for fixing the Fukushima tritium-laced water, the Alps water, because they said we didn't have any quantitative and qualitative data, and essentially they want something with tritium. And we have a problem because we can't get access to the tritium that they have unless we've already done it. Anyway, so I put an appeal out during the course of this live stream. You can go and find the link on remoteview.icu to this live stream, where I've also published images of the SEM data and links to the PDF documents that include that analysis data that was conducted by Alan Goldwater at his Magic Sound lab. And during the course of the live presentation, one Justin Forder suggested a product that we could potentially purchase and here it is. It's tritiated water and for 10 millilitres it is £86. So bordering on about £10,000 for one litre. Anyway, we actually have a sponsor for this. The problem is that this is a radioactive product. Shipping address must have a license to receive radioactive materials. So we are working on that and I was thinking about this and this is absolutely what we would need to meet the requirements that are set out by nine sites for the application. And so if we can solve this shipping address thing and find a partner to work with to do the experiments, I think we can do this. And then I was thinking, how do we actually assess that we've achieved what we need to achieve in terms of remediating the amount of emissions from this material? And the actual point of this is an internal liquid scintillation counting standard of tritiated water. So this is water that has a specific activity in a 10 mil sample. And it's actually for calibrating these devices, which are liquid scintillation counters. And let's just have a look at what that is. Oh, the Quantilus GCT provides greater throughput with the ability to handle up to 408 standard 20 milliliter vials or 720 small 4 or 7 milliliter vials. For optimized resolution, the Quantilus GCT offers three spectrum memories for storage of alpha, beta, gamma simultaneously, but the gamma can be filtered using the patent pending algorithm. The new tri-carb portfolio of liquid scintillator counters, the 4810, 4910, and the 5110, have been redesigned to provide better particle discrimination and reduced counting times for the detection of alpha, beta, and gamma. The tri-carb live spectral display and plotting, the chemiluminescence detection with optional correction, allows for flexibility in your applications. Okay, so that is the product, and that is the solution. So what we do is we use our slightly better constructed electrolyzer and we would have a condenser in there to condense the product of the exposure of the gas flame to calcium carbonate. We would collect a number of mils and as it said in this video here, you can have 20 milliliter vials, 4 milliliter vials or 7 milliliter vials. And whichever one you do, what you do is we use the scintillation standard. That is the material we will be remediating. And we put that in as one of these vials and that gives our calibration. And then we run our liter of gas against the calcium carbonate and we then have two components. One will be the residue fluid that is produced from the exposure of the gas to the calcium carbonate and we have the residual liquid in the electrolyzer and because we know from other technologies that 
the lighter fractions of the water will electrolyze first, we will need to sample that. And so we have another one of these vials with the filtered sludge water, and then we have another one with the residual water in the electrolyzer. And that gives us our calibration, our product with potential remediation, and the residual water. And if we can achieve something similar to what was achieved by Yule Brown in remediating other nuclear radioisotopes in the 1980s and 1990s, the target requirement for the Fukushima bidding process is a 90% reduction. So there would apparently be quite a bit of headroom. And since it would appear from the Pugamob reaction tables that there's a very high energetic well to fall into for this process to occur, we could very well achieve that. And if we don't, at least we tried. So we have people right now that are looking to try and work with Perkin Elmer or find a lab in the UK to do this. What I'd also like to do is to have a residual gas analyzer to see if we are producing helium because the reaction that is favored is the one with tritium which interacts with calcium 40 producing potassium 39 and helium and that takes away the triton and if there's potassium there then we know from Lena that readily transmutes. Obviously we know that the flame does do a lot of damage to the calcium carbonate but the stuff is very cheap what this will allow us to do is assuming we can get over the legislation if we can rent one of these units from perkin elmer or gain access to a lab that already has one and then we just need to buy some of this stuff run it through the electrolyzer and burn it with a condenser and that will give us our qualitative and quantitative data for doing what is required by nine sites for the application to the remediation process for fixing the Fukushima 1.3 million tons of triated Alps waste water. So thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.